Hi, my name is Judy Gelber, and I was a member of the Case Western Reserve University women's soccer team um, from 1999 to 2003. I played field for four years. I actually came in as a goalkeeper and there was a better goalkeeper than me, but I was a decent enough field player to make the transition to defense. Um, and so I played a stopper, which we didn't play flat back then. It was just right when, when there was a switch in positioning. So I don't even know if, uh, if they use that position anymore, but played defense for all four years. Uh, I was um, a starter all four, all four years and captain my junior and senior year. I think it's safe to say that soccer was my life um, in college. I chose Case because I was assured of a spot on the team and that was a really high priority for me. Um, coming from Nebraska and I came from an area where soccer was not um, a super huge thing. In fact, the people who were really um, like dedicated to soccer were um, driving an hour away to Omaha to play. So for me, just to be able to have recognition as an athlete and to be able to play was important. Um, it was something that I lived and breathed and even to this day it shapes um, how I am as an adult and how I am as a coach. I coach, uh, nowadays I, I coach CrossFit, but it shapes who I am and how I work with kids and how I work with other people. Um, and just my confidence as an athlete. Um, looking back at some of my most fun memories, I feel like when I was playing, we were in a kind of a transition period where we were often the underdog, but we could pull out some really fun wins. And I remember, I think it was my senior year, we um, tied Chicago, which was, um, they were number one in the country at the time. So it was really cool to have an overtime tie against the top um, a top division three school, especially before we had really made um, the radar, um, if you will. And also I played uh, right during kind of a big transition as 9-11 uh, was in the middle of my four years and obviously playing NYU is a big thing. So we went to New York and we played, there was a change in like schedule a lineup. So actually I played in New York three out of my four years. And um, so I actually played before 9-11, and then we actually had a game postponed for it. We played two months after, and then we played um, again my senior year. And I just remember my senior year thinking about what a treat it was to be an athlete during this time in the United States and to be able to be a part of the UAA and really travel to these cities. I mean, I was, I'm from Nebraska, so like to be able to travel to these really big cities and see metropolitan areas um, was really, uh, a defining part for me as a collegiate, I guess just defining part of my college experience as a whole, not just as an athlete. I feel like I've kind of always fallen into a leadership role. Like I said, I was captain for two years and it's just like what I do. Um, and so I graduated, I went to school I, it's kind of funny because I went to grad school at Washington University in St. Louis. So I always said I went to the dark side. They said I saw the light, but I was a grad assistant at WashU right after Case. Um, and that was really neat. So I got to be in kind of a coaching role there. And then I was hired by WashU. So I actually spent the first nine years of my professional career as a physical therapist at Washington University in St. Louis. So very, um, Obviously, the, the conference and just the style of school and type of school was really meaningful to me. It's part of why I chose WashU. Um, but I fell into, within my profession as a physical therapist, into a leadership role really quick, being in academia. I stayed there for nine years and loved it. And then um, the pull to come back home to Nebraska was just too big. So I ended up coming back home about four years ago. Um, and I actually now own my own business and I'm in, I do a lot of mentorship uh, across the country and I do a lot of education to physical therapists. So I'm still um, always kind of find myself in a leadership role, which is something that I uh, learned, developed and like really fell into starting during case soccer. So it's in, in my opinion, a huge part of who I am. And I see myself still as like a a grown up athlete, if you will, the way I, the way I do things and physical therapy being 
a very active profession. So it, it's a definitely played a made a big impact on how I um, saw the world and what I chose to do with my life. Currently, I own four movement analysis and rehabilitation. I'm in my little home office right there. So I got my, my work shirt and my, my little home office. Um, I primarily provide what I call modern clinician development for physical therapists or other movement experts. So I teach continuing education, but continuing medical education. I'll be heading to Tennessee next weekend. I um, have a group of not just physical therapists, but movement professionals, coaches, athletic trainers, physical therapists who I mentor. And we have a network where we um, stay up to date on research and practice and keep each other um, kind of informed and well networked. And I uh, provide patient care locally in Nebraska in, in an innovative way. So I'm all outside of insurance. And I, what I've been telling people, what seems to like resonate, people understand is that I am like having a personal trainer who's medical at the same time. So it's kind of the best of both worlds, um, bridging the gap beyond the confines of insurance and, um, and healthcare kind of bigger. So respecting healthcare, but also saying, hey, this goes longer and it is bigger and it goes into um, wellness and it goes into fitness and it goes into lifelong, um, just lifelong health. And so it's not just providing that to patients, but also helping to um, help other physios and movement profession professionals do the same thing with their population. He's gonna stretch out and sleep right now. That's my dog. He's from Turkey. Um, so he's, they call him a turkey dog. Um, there's a large stray population in Turkey and he came here and when he came, he did not speak English. And still sometimes when he doesn't want to do what I want him to do, he pretends to not speak English. So there's my one fun fact. Gosh, I, they were the best years. They still are the best years of my life. I wouldn't go back and do them again because I wouldn't want to change them, but enjoy, savor. Um, every minute of it and um, know that that experience doesn't go away even when it ends you still have your friends especially nowadays and how connected we are you still have your network your friends your people and it's going to shape who you are the whole rest of you know your life so but slow down put your phone down sleep enough enjoy it maximize it and uh, don't stress about especially right now don't stress about the small things focus on what you can do and what you get to do